Welcome back to art class. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is our project is going to be a one point perspective picture and you're going to need a few items to do this. You are going to need two pieces of white paper. You're going to need a pencil. Uh, you're going to want a ruler and you're going to want a glue bottle. Another handy item to have is probably an eraser because uh, there is a little bit of racing that's necessary for this picture. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna need to do is we need to actually have one big piece of paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these two together and let them sit for a bit. Okay, so with the glue, make sure you clear, clean the nozzle and you're gonna put just some dots, very small, tiny dots, because we don't want this oozing out. Close it, and I'm not going to put the paper together yet. First, I am going to use my nozzle, now that my glue bottle is closed, to thin this glue out as thin as I possibly can make it. overlap them, try to get them lined up as best I can. I want to overlap maybe a finger space to a thumb space. Very carefully smooth that out. Make sure it's not oozing with glue. And we're going to let that sit for a minute. Actually, we're going to let it sit for probably about an hour. Um, after that, it should be pretty well stable to work on, but we don't like working on wet glued stuff. It just isn't going to work well with a pencil. So uh, come back in about an hour, and we'll get going. Okay, and we're back, and now my paper is dry and ready to work on. Uh, one other thing uh, that you may want to pick up while you are letting this dry is a square item. Uh, I put some Duplos together to get square, and it's roughly uh, about two and a half inches uh, big, square. Uh, it would be better if it was closer to three, but this is a, the closest I have at my house. You could almost do a box of crayons and get really close to three inches that way. The problem is the box of crayons is a little too tall. So you'd have to uh, kind of work with it on uh, tracing it. You could also cut out your own stencil, um, but you're looking for a square that's roughly three by three. Uh, that's gonna be kind of handy. Okay. Um, I will accept down to two and a half. Any much bigger than three inches and it might be too big. Anything smaller than two, uh, two and a half inches and that might be too small. All right, so we need to get going. Uh, one thing with one point perspectives is you need to remember that it has one vanishing point. Now, if you think back to uh, second grade, we actually worked with uh, those exploding shapes from the center. And this is very much the same idea. We're going to create the illusion of 3D on a flat piece of paper. Kind of like uh, the old Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons where he would paint on the wall of a mountain and the roadrunner would run through the picture because it would look like he could but the wily coyote would always obviously just stop when he hit the wall that's kind of the illusion that we're quite trying to make so in order to do that we need to find the middle of this piece of paper we could use the ruler but there's actually a faster way the faster way is to actually take your paper fold it in half the long skinny ways Try to get your edges to line up as best as you can. Give it a nice crease. Okay. Yeah. So now we know where the middle is going this way. We need to know the middle going the other way. So again, we're going to fold this in half. It would be considered the hamburger way. Now this is gonna be a little bit trickier considering we glued in that spot, but because the glue is pretty thin, it should still fold okay. Nice little crease. 
you open it up. And now we have a crisscrossing folds. Where those two folds meet should be uh, just about the exact center of the paper. So we're gonna put our dot there. And that is gonna be our vanishing point. So I actually need you to put the letters V, P, right above it. Okay, so your dot is right on where the two folds cross and the letters V, P, right above it. That way you know what I'm talking about when I am talking about the vanishing point. Now, if you're wondering what a vanishing point is or don't remember what it is from the second grade, it's the point at which everything is so small, so far away from us, that it looks like it vanishes. Hence the word vanishing point. So it's so far away, so tiny because it's so far away, that it looks like it vanishes. And up here at the bottom of our paper, that will be really close to us in our picture. Okay, So it will look bigger here, tinier there. This is where your ruler is going to come in. Now, we have a fold right here, and I'm actually going to mark where that fold is, okay? Because that's going to help me measure going in two directions. What we're going to do is we're going to put a road in, kind of like the Wiley Coyote would do, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, putting my zero and moving over two inches, and I'm just going to put a dot or a mark, okay? Then what I'm going to do is scoot my ruler back so that the ruler is, so the two is actually on the, the center mark here, and I'm going to go backwards two inches to the zero. Okay. Now, a quick check to make sure this is looking correct. From this dot over here to this dot over here should be a total of four inches. Okay. And with this particular video, I do highly, highly recommend that you take the time to pause the video, rewind it, rewatch the part that you need, and go forward slowly one piece at a time. Because it's, it is a lot of lots of directions, and you're going to want to hear them once or twice. Okay, next, uh, what I need us to do is we're going to connect this dot to the vanishing point. So the one over here to the vanishing point. And it's just a nice straight line. I'm gonna press kinda of hard so you can see it, um, but I would rather you at home draw it lightly. Uh, that way it's easier for you to erase. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing to this dot over here. This one in the middle stays where it is, just leave it alone. Again, I'm gonna draw dark. So you can see, but you should home should be drawing lightly. All right, right now that just looks like a triangle. It doesn't look like a road. Well, we'll get to the road part in a second. Next thing I need to do is we need to put in the mark for the sidewalk. So I'm going to put my ruler here at where this hits. Measure over one inch and put a mark. Then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to flip my ruler upside down because it's a little bit easier. And I'm going to measure going that direction to the left. So my zero is right here at the edge. I'm going to go over one inch and put a mark. Nope, get her on there. So right now, your picture should look symmetrical with the same on both sides. Next, I want this dot to line up with the vanishing point, so they're going to the exact same point. Take the time. Close does not count on this project. It really does matter that you line it up as exactly as possible. Okay. So now we're getting a little bit more like it's going off in the distance. Okay. The next thing I need us to do is we're going to, on the fold, draw our lines for the center of the road. So in the center of the road should be a uh, rectangle. Okay. We think of them as stripes, but they're actually just rectangles. So I'm going to do that right on the fold. Now watch as I go. I'm staying right on the fold. Hold on a second, I need to 
adjust mine just a little bit. It's a little too short. There we go. Okay, so what I did here, it starts out as a rectangle. The next one is just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter. A little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter. A little bit skinnier, a little bit shorter. Each one should be get skinnier and shorter until it becomes a little dot way off in the distance. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit. Okay. Then, I told you these were going to be sidewalks. Well, sidewalks have dividing lines between each section. And it would take a long time to do each side all by itself. So there's a way to speed it up. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put my ruler going across both sidewalks at the same time, making sure it looks as flat like the letter A. This is not like the letter A. Okay? Flat like the letter A, the cross piece in the letter A. And what I'm going to do then is that way I can draw the line here and along here at the same time. That way both sidewalks get done at the same time. I'm going to keep scooching it back. Now each sidewalk oops, piece will get slightly smaller as it goes. So you're going to have to kind of eyeball it. There's no perfect measurement for this. It's kind of a it looks good kind of a situation where you're like, I'm satisfied that it looks like it's supposed to. Now, right here where the two papers overlap, it, just be careful, it, it, that kind of will get in the way a little bit. At some point, you're going to get to the point where the ruler is kind of in the way, and then you can eyeball because they're so small. Like that. So now you can see it kind of going off into the distance there. Okay, uh, we're going to do one more thing today, and then we'll uh, leave it at that. Okay, so um, this is where your stencil comes in handy. Uh, this is going to be the base of a house. Okay? Uh, we want it to be about two to three finger spaces from the top, or excuse me, from the bottom, and two to three finger spaces from the side of the paper. We do not want it like that. Not a good idea, and we don't want it down to here like that. So find a square. You could cut your own square to trace. Um, if you're really good with the ruler, you could actually just draw your square. Um, I'm a, kind of a fan of using the stencil, and this is pretty close to the size I want. So I'm going to use this. Okay, so ooh, I need to go back and fix this. Fix my corners here. Okay, so there's my base of the house. But... Uh, house has a roof, so I'm going to put a dot. Um, I want the roof to go above the fold. So right here um, is my fold. It's right even with the vanishing point. I want my roof to be a bit taller than the fold itself, and it should be about the center of the house. I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to connect it. Pretty easy, right? Looks like a basic house. The roof is a little bit taller than the vanishing point. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to connect because I want this house to look 3D. So this is actually the side of the house. This is not the front of the house. This is the side of the house. And we're going to make the front so the front of the house is facing the street level. So this is pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to connect the bottom corner here 
to the vanishing point. Do this lightly. I'm going to do it kind of hard so you can see what I'm doing. But again, you're actually connecting to the vanishing point. Not kind of close, actually touching. Take your time to get everything lined up. I'm going to do it kind of dark so you can see it pretty easy. All right. Next one we're going to do is from the corner of the house for the roof. So this is going to be the front of the roof up here. So we're going to need a line for that. So right where the roof and the house meet. Again, I'm going to draw kind of dark so you can see it pretty easy. And then the last one will be to the peak of the roof, to the vanishing point. Okay, now uh, we're just going to do finish the basic shape of the house. Uh, right now it looks like it's shooting out from the center, uh, like it's exploding. If you think back to your second grade project, very similar. Uh, but we need the house to end because right now the way it's drawn is it looks like the house is going to infinity and beyond. Okay? So we need to, the other side of the house to end. And the other side of the house will be just like this. It's going to have a slanted roof, so it should have a slanted roof here. And it has a straight up and down side, so it should have a straight up and down side here. So slanted, so they match. And then straight up and down, straight up and down. Sometimes what I do just to try to get the slant the same is I'll put my ruler kind of close to it to see. And then I'm going to just drag my ruler over here. This is for the roof. I like to do the roof first. It's a little bit easier. Okay, so see, slant like that. Now we know that the roof or the walls of a house should be straight up and down, so I'm going to take my ruler and make it go straight up and down like that. So straight up and down, straight up and down. Okay, uh, this is the house, then this is just extra. So that's where your eraser would come in handy and you can go in and erase the extra. Now some of mine won't disappear very well because I pressed so hard, but hopefully you're drawing lightly so that your house looks like it's standing all by itself like that. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to leave it here. This is a good place to stop. I want you to make sure you're stopping and watching the video, uh, rewinding it uh, and pausing it and things like that. A couple of reminders. This is a two inch section, two inch section, one inch, one inch, okay? This is roughly a three inch square, okay? So somewhere around three inches square, okay? And I will see you next week to wrap up the drawing. We're not gonna get to coloring, but we will get to wrapping up the drawing next week. All right. Uh, make sure you take a picture of this and upload it so I can see that you got this far. And I'll see you next week.